Hey everyone, welcome back to Girl Reinventing. We have moved into another project. This piece here found in the trash, no surprise there. My neighbor, a few houses down, found it and she saw this piece of furniture laying on the curb ready for either the trash compactor or Girl Reinventing. So we got it because I think I'd like to do something fun with this. This piece behind me, what we're going to be working on, is a curio cabinet. I am not big into curio cabinets. I do have curiosities all throughout my house, but I don't contain them in cabinetry. My curiosities are kind of spread through the house here and there, odds and ends and curiosities. However, some people like to keep their collectibles in cabinets. I just thought I could re reuse this piece and turn it into something a little bit more modern. What I found out is that this is a pretty nice piece of furniture. It's solid oak. It's by a company called Pulaski Furniture Corporation. And all of the um, facts are here on this little sticker that was dry rotted on the bottom. So I think I'm gonna actually, a little off topic, I'm gonna decoupage. Woo! I'm gonna decoupage this back in at the end because I do like to leave little tidbits of information when I am fortunate enough to find. I'm going to use this hardware that I have salvaged and I think that's super pretty. So it's going to be an apothecary. I'm going to put new shelves in, probably glass. We'll see. And I'm going to paint it simply in black. I've got this brand new unopened container from Melange in the color jet black. And the theme is gonna be black and gold. So that's what we're gonna do. Let's go check her out together. Here she is, the curiosity cabinet that is going to now be an apothecary. So it's got this big chunky base on the bottom held in by some screws. I think I'm gonna remove the base, order a couple new fancy legs from Amazon to go on the bottom to kind of modernize it a little bit. The door, oh, oh it's kind of stuck right now. I'm not gonna push it. But the glass that was on the front of the door <laughs> fell through. I have to fix that. These are the little bits that hold the glass in place on the door frame. We found it without the glass shelves. Hello. We found it without the glass shelves. So I'm going to have to either order some new shelves or maybe I'll just build some shelves with wood but I think I'm gonna use the glass shelves because I think that would look really, really sleek. And then coming up to the top here, we're gonna get rid of this old hardware. It's got some tape on it. It has some, you know, pretty nice wood grain, but this baby's going black. Black and gold, that's what I'm feeling. And then here is the top, another big piece of molding. So I believe that's coming off as well. It's got a recessed light in here and we'll probably keep that, I think. I'm not sure. I'm not gonna overcrowd my brain with that decision right now. Right now, the first thing to do is stick with the plan, clean and paint. So off we go. I actually ended up removing all of the hardware and taking the door off and taking all of the glass out before cleaning the piece, before painting the piece.
When you're working all alone, you have to get a little tricky sometimes. Removing all of those staples took me a little bit of time because they were sunk pretty deep in there and I don't think I have the proper tool, but I got the job done with what I had. Here's where I decided that I was actually going to make the top of this curio cabinet now the bottom. I had to fill the hole that was left there from where the light fixture was strung through. So I used a hole saw, I matched up the size pretty closely, and then drilled out a hole. And you will see I used that as a patch for that bottom there, which you will see in the next couple of clips. Because I want to reuse the light fixture and the bottom is now going to be the top because I liked the chunky molding for the top of it better, which you'll see, you'll see why. I had to pre, not pre-drill, but re-drill a new hole so that I could restring that light fixture back through, but this was perfect because I needed a patch for the bottom of, with well, a new bottom of this piece. And I did snug it in there with tight bond glue, although my camera shut off the battery died so you didn't see that, but I just used the tight bond glue. Now, because the cord has to also go through the top piece of this molding, I ended up drilling another hole with the hole saw and then reattaching everything, taking off the old feet because we don't need those anymore, and of course cleaning as you go. Filling any gouges, leftover holes with this ProBond wood filler. I really like this brand. It slides on or smooths on pretty, pretty easily. And then the sanding of the excess is pretty quick and it dries pretty fast as well. Because I made some orientation adjustments to this piece, I wanted to check the placement of the hardware, where it's going to go, well the new hardware, filling the holes, and this is the color board, the colors we'll use. Just a few more steps before we can get to the actual painting part. Some sanding, and then some cleaning, I use alcohol here, I'm testing to see if the hardware is brass, it is not because brass does not stick to a magnet. So I will be taking all of this off and I will reuse it. Wow, I'm pretty organized this time. Sometimes I remember to label my hardware and the location where it came from. quick fix to the weakened joints. I have a syringe from work. Uh, sometimes, because I load up my pockets with supplies every day, sometimes things come home with me. It's inevitable. Figured I'd put it to good use since it was already kind of mussed up. I think this one went through the washing machine. But anyhow, we're gonna give this a try. I've seen other people use syringes and I think it'll work really great. Let's give it a go.
Now we're going to go over the whole piece, just give it a little bit of a scuff sand with 220 grit and then wipe it all back. You'll see me use the, not denatured alcohol, but just regular isopropyl alcohol because that's what I had in the basement at the time and I figured it would dry pretty quickly, leave it a clean, dry surface ready for paint. I don't know if it was a good idea or not, but it worked okay. All right, DIY paint. We are gonna do apothecary on the inside. I thought it was much appropriate because it is going to be an apothecary. So this green color I think will fit nicely with the color scheme. And since DIY paint is highly pigmented, it really reactivates well with water. I just figured I'd take a second and show you. I painted pretty much almost the whole first coat with what I could gather left over from the lid. Take some patience. You can reactivate it with water, which I did, and then I just squished it around with my popsicle stick and ended up with a good amount of paint. Hey, Gus. Hey, Gus. Going in for round two of Apothecary. Before I paint the outer coat black, I figured I would wax the inside just in case I get drips of black paint. My idea was that it would be easy to wipe back and it wouldn't stain, <clears throat> excuse me, the apothecary uh, paint color that I had already done. And here we go, using Melange in jet black. You don't need to use a primer with this paint. It's already built in, but it does not have a built-in top coat, so I will seal it in the end. But I wanted to see if the black would go on smooth. I'm not all that familiar with using Melange paint. It's only my, my third time using it, and I have always used a top coat in the past. But this is round two now of the black in uh, jet black and melange and so far no bleed through and very good coverage without using a primer. Just touching up the inside where the black kind of hugged the corner where the glass will go. I want some really clean lines on the inside. And of course I wanted to replace the little tidbits of information on the bottom of the piece again so that the next person who gets this can know what it is, where it came from, and yeah, all that information. Here is the fun part. This is my inspiration. I really felt like this piece needed like a big, fancy, decorative, like a crown jewel almost at the top. I really wanted it to have an Art Deco vibe, so I didn't have a stencil, but what I did have was tape. So I used my imagination and I took my time and I just cut out some bits of painter's tape and tried to make a design which I was hoping would look Art Deco, and I really do feel like I achieved that. I'm really happy with the way it turned out, but you can tell me, what do you think when you see it at the end?
black gold geometry. I don't know. I think I might have nailed it. All right, this is a bit of a sidestep. The mirror was way too new for my liking. So I knew that you could antique a mirror by removing the gray enamel and then using bleach and water to uh, antique it. So the citrus strip, I left it on for about four hours. And you can see underneath of there, that's the silver mirror. It worked like a charm. It just peeled right off. The process of antiquing a mirror is a little bit tedious, so I did not include all of the detailed steps in this video. I think I'm going to make for you guys a tutorial on how to antique a mirror and um, be able to just peel the back off without scraping. That um, might be a whole video unto itself, but this is, this is basically what I did. I sprayed the back with black after I antiqued it and also got my toes. <laughs> but here's the antiqued mirror. Did I hear you hammering all of these down? Yes. Oh, I'm flipping it from over here? Yeah, we're going to flip it over. We're going to flip it up onto its side and then onto its back. Which side? This one. Yeah, we're going to go up this way. Ready? One, two, three. Does it have to be on the... Does it have to be on the bubble wrap? And then let's flip Does it, it have to be on the bubble wrap? Uh, no. Okay. Can I have said bubble wrap? No. Not yet. I really like this. I do too. I love, 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 love the mirror. Honestly? Is it like a bookshelf? Yeah. Could we replace my bookshelf with this? I don't see why not.
Last step, putting on the jewelry, my favorite thing to do at the very end. You did not see me wax this whole piece, the black, uh, the jet black from the launch. I did go through and wax the whole piece with the same wax I used on the inside, the clear wax by Debbie's DIY. And that's a wrap. All right, I had to take this piece outside to take photographs of the finished look. It was way too big to fit into my basement from top to bottom, so I had to carry it outside and shoot outside. So not the best place for shooting images, but it was all I had, so I had to make do. So I hope you enjoy. Thanks for watching and stay tuned. Here she comes. Art Deco Apothecary. The cabinet is still without its glass shelves. They have been ordered, and when they come in, I will update the community board and show you better pictures inside the house in its final destination in my daughter's room. Thanks for watching, everybody. I am just blown away by all the love and support everybody has been showing me on this channel. My intention here is only to inspire, to keep things out of the landfill, and to give you the idea that you can potentially give some new life to something that you might have thought was junk. Have a great day, everybody. See you next time.